Hi, I'm Sarah, Features Editor of Cosmetics Business, and today Cosmetics Business is in conversation with Dagma Kloster, Managing Director of Fabrica Stell. Hi Dagma, how are you? Hi Sarah, very nice to, to be here. Thanks so much for inviting me and doing well. I hope you are as well. <laughs> yes, absolutely. No, really good, thank you. Um, and obviously we're here today to get to know more about yourself and more about Fabrica Castell. So I know that Fabrica Castell is 250 years old. Um, you're yes. based in Stein in Germany. Um, and consumers might know you best for your lovely stationery and uh, your luxury um, art supplies and things like that. Obviously, you're so much more, um, hence why we're talking today. And so I was just wondering, can you just explain in your own words what Faber Castell actually does? Yes, I'm, yeah. I'm pleased to do so. So as you just said, Faber Castell, uh, Faber Castell, the company or the group company at the time, was founded in 1761. So we are a very well established uh, a company, have been in existence for a very long time, and it all started with the production of graphite pencils. So um, basically, you know, from that derived the global stationery brand, which is now present in many, many countries. You know, we hold the biggest pencil production in Brazil, for example, which is huge in Sao Carlos. I think we do about six million uh, pencils each day there. Uh, it's an amazing, uh, an amazing production facility. I just had the pleasure of going there uh, prior to the Corona outbreak and everything. We have our headquarter here in Germany in Stein, which is close to, to Nuremberg, so in Bavaria. And as I said, we're really... Uh, big, big um, corporation, you know, we are still family owned, so ninth generation uh, of the Faber-Castell family. And in 1978, Count Anton Wolfgang von Faber-Castell decided that it would be a good idea to actually add a, another product segment or another area to the pencil production, to the stationery, and that was cosmetics. Mm -hmm. So in 1978, the Faber-Castell cosmetics brand or uh, company was launched, was, uh, was created, and since then, we are a OEM, we are a manufacturer of color cosmetics with a very strong R&D, with a, a very, very strong focus on quality and innovation sustainability. And we make cos primarily cosmetic pencils, but also some mascara, but primarily cosmetic pencils mm -hmm. for eye, nails, um, for face and for lips. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have about 800, around about 800 employees worldwide. Wow. with production sites in Germany, so here in Stein, and then in Gerolsgrün, which is about 100 kilometers away from, uh, from Stein, in the US, in Elgin, in Illinois, and in Brazil, in uh, Sao Carlos, as I just said. We service a global customer base, and we basically service them all, we, you know, from the largest corporations, the really big players, with many, many multiple brands under the umbrella, to uh, mid-sized companies, more regional ones, more local ones, to also startups and influencers and celebrity brands. So the whole portfolio, and as I said, since 1978, that's what we have been, you know, passionately working in and very happy to be today in our call to tell you a little bit more about us. Absolutely, wow, okay. I didn't know you. that was the breadth of everything that you yeah. wow. okay, that's really impressive. So you mentioned the company, uh, the, the wider companies, 250 years old the cosmetics admission is 40 years old yes so i was wondering in terms of values that's what are your values and how have they changed to how do you maintain them how does that work i think our first and foremost value and you know the values are not something that is just restricted to cosmetics or just restricted to the stationary side it's really you know as being a family-owned company it it's it's the culture that basically permeates throughout the whole organization. And, and a key value, obviously, is the entrepreneurship. You know, we're an extremely entrepreneurial organization. We're very innovative. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we, uh, we, are, we want to be and we are a very sustainable company. And I can talk a little bit more about that uh, later on if you would like me to. Um, and we're very passionate. We're passionate, you know, about bringing creativity to, um, to our customers on the stationary side, you know, um, enabling them to, to follow their creativity, to, you know, to be able to have the right instruments in order, you know, whether it's for school or whether it's for art or whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. And on the, on the beauty side, which is my, my segment, obviously, we're extremely passionate about making people look and feel good. Yes. That's what we're all about, you know. Yeah. Um, at the same time, it's not just about making people look and feel good. If we can achieve that, then that's great. But we also want to do so by being a very sustainable and safe company. And we want to contribute to a sustainable and safe future for our planet 
and for our clients, for the customers and the consumers. Mm -hmm. That's a, it's one of the core values that we have um, because you know we can't just live in the here and now. We have to make sure that we plan for the future, and that's that's what we what we're really good in and what we're what we're very dedicated and focused on. Yeah. Um, so we want to create innovative and sustainable products um, and offer them at the highest quality level. So quality, entrepreneurship, innovation, sustainability, those are really the core values, you know, paired with an openness and honest, honesty of, and also integrity of how we are interacting here and working towards our customers and our, also our suppliers and basically the world out there. Uh, so in, we touched on consumers and just generally speaking of values, They've really, consumers, I mean, they've really had to reevaluate theirs in recent times in terms of mm -hmm. the pandemic and the yep. economic downturn for many countries and that's happened. How do you go about supporting them during this time? Well, let's, let's, let's talk about COVID-19 for a moment, shall we? I mean, obviously, you know, you just mentioned the pandemic, so it's hit hit all of us. I mean, I didn't think there is, there's no country and no, no, no person that's gone completely unscathed and every one of us is, is affected by it. Mm -hmm. um, the impact on the beauty industry has been quite, um, quite dramatic, particularly on color cosmetics. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, if you consider, you know, from a lockdown, you know, the, the retail closures and everything, economies, as, as you just said, you know, in decline, obviously, you know, people having less spending money, et cetera, et cetera. And, and a lot of insecurity as well amongst people, you know, where's the world going? What does this mean for me? Um, it's, it's been, it has been because, you know, it, it still continues to be a very difficult time. And then if you look at color cosmetics in particular, um, you know, I think the consumer behavior had changed already prior to Corona. Mm -hmm. um, it had changed in so far as that there were a lot more brands on offer. You know, people really wanted to have what, what I would describe as, as fast, fast beauty. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the consumer, she wanted to, primarily she, but of course also there are, there are men out there who, uh, who like to have, have color cosmetics, but, but the consumer really wanted to have a new product all the time. You know, there was a lot of Instagram, the product had to be Instagrammable. At the same time, there was this, um, this desire for sustainability, mm -hmm. you know, so it was a little bit best of both worlds. So on the one hand, you know, constantly new product introductions at an affordable price if possible, you know, unless you're really into the prestige segment. But please, I would like to have my cake and eat it too. So I want to have product very, very quickly, new introductions, but I also want to have it sustainable, please. Absolutely. And, um, you know, and then of course, uh, the e-commerce took, took a very, very strong role in everything. And then, you know, all of a sudden Corona happened mm -hmm. and it was like, bam, you know, and it brought us all to a tremendous hold. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, people rethought really about, um, is consumption really that important for me? Um, on the color cosmetic side, well, will I be able to afford all these things? That's the next thing. And on the color cosmetic side, you know, we have a couple of very specific factors that are right now really affecting our business. Just think about home office. I guess, you know, you are, I'm not quite sure whether you're in a studio or whether you are actually recording this from the comfort of your own home, so to speak. Um, you know, we all we all had to learn and and uh, and get acquainted with working from home, mm -hmm. home office. That also meant a lot of women, for example, didn't wear makeup anymore. Yeah. Um, then you have um, the inability to socialize. You know, entertainment was basically not something that sprang to anybody's mind. Um, masks. You know, if if you wear a mask, then either your makeup wears off or you just don't bother because you know what the heck. Yeah. Um, no more traveling opportunities, you know, no more entertainment, etc. So, so really, I mean, the, I, I learned as of, as of late that the, the, global, the color cosmetics um, industry has a, experienced a nosedive of about 60%, oh. which, is, which is huge. Yeah. I mean, that's really, really huge. And um, even if now, you know, in most, most countries, the stores have reopened and everything, but uh, you can't try out product in the stores, at least in Germany. I don't know what it's like, you know, in, in the UK or in the US, but in Germany, you're not allowed to try out product. So that results in people only doing re, uh, repeat buys. I know the product already, you know, I can't try it out, so I just buy what I already know. So, um, you know, it's, it's almost a perfect storm. Yes. And we as, uh, you know, we as suppliers, uh, in collaboration, of course, with our customers, the brands, need to come up with an answer to that perfect storm, whether that is a different way of how we can sample products whether it's a different way you know of how we can in how we can help them interact with their uh with their customers um we just have to we have to find ways of how to approach this but we shouldn't lose sight of the longer term development of the cosmetics market either so um i would say the last couple of months have been 
interesting, <laughs> so to speak. <laughs> uh, but we just we have to, you know, in in, uh, in close collaboration and really, you know, put our heads together and come up with new ideas of how to address those consumers whose needs have changed mm -hmm. and who will want to have still product that makes them look and feel beautiful, but at the same time in a very different way than what was possible prior to Corona. Of course. And you mentioned and you touched upon sustainability. Um, mm -hmm. And I was wondering if you could go into a bit more detail about that actually. Um, and in the current climate and also before, um, how do you meet the ethical environment needs that basically help the brand and the consumer? Yeah. Right. Um, yeah, this is this is a subject that is very dear to my heart, so I'm very happy to uh, to to um, busy talk about this in a little bit more more detail. We have a motto here at Faber Castell Cosmetics, and it's called "It's Our Nature." Okay. And why do we say it's our nature? Because it's our nature to create products that make people not only look and feel beautiful, but that are also sustainable and that also help our planet and help our environment. And how do we do that? Um, we have our own forests in Brazil, for example. Cool. So we have uh, a huge, we have huge plantations in Brazil. And so we're really, really strong on reforestation, all of that. We're a carbon neutral company. We were just recently this year awarded the Ecovadis gold standard. So we are very, very strongly focused on making sustainable products. And also, you know, if you look at, uh, at mechanical pencils, so plastics pencils, basically, you know, we want to make sure that we always look for alternative plastics so that we don't, you know, have to use virtual plastics and whatever else. We don't want to, you know, contribute to um, the oceans being filled up with, you know, because our product is in, in very few cases something that is reusable. Mm -hmm. So we want to make sure that we keep our, our ecological footprint at a very, very good pace and everything. We are also looking into ref refillable products. We're looking into reusable products and all of that. And on the formula side, we are very strong in creating clean products. So, you know, less ingredients, uh, certainly no hazardous ingredients or ingredients, you know, that we already foresee that might turn into a problem. Mm -hmm. um, we are strong on the halal side, for example. So we have a whole range that, uh, that speaks to customers who want to have halal. And we're also strong in, in vegan options. Mm -hmm. So we want to make sure, you know, that we can service that segment as well. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to be very important that we don't lose sight of that. Yeah. Because, you know, with, with Corona, at least, you know, in our everyday lives, I don't know, as I said, I don't know what it's like in the UK necessarily, but here in Germany, I can see that prior to Corona, everybody was like, no more plastics, you know, we don't want to have any more plastics, we don't want to have, you know, all this throwaway stuff of what at one time use, et cetera, et cetera. Now, Corona has hit and it's all about hygiene. It's mm -hmm. about hygiene, it's about safety, you know, and so therefore, everybody's saying, oh, well, let's, let's, let's use plastics again, you know, let's make sure we have that. I think we need to not lose sight of what kind of a planet, what kind of an environment we want to have mm -hmm. five, 10, 15 years from now. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if I see at the moment all the masks that are being thrown away, if I see, you know, that we are covering glasses with plastic so that they appear to be hygienic or whatever, we have to make sure that we create products and that we create solutions that, that are sustainable and that are mid to longer term sustainable, you know, and that, that we... Um, that we give the consumers the right safety, the right hygiene, yeah. but at the same time, you know, that we are, that, that we are not going overboard and basically taking a step, a step back to where we used to be. Yeah. And I think that's, that's going to be very important. I mean, you know, I, I just talked about our own forests, for example, in, in Brazil. And um, if you think about wood clench pencils, you know, the, the pencils that you might, might have at home, you know, in, in your beauty case and whatever else. Yeah. I mean, they're the most hygienic uh, product that you can think about because you sharpen it every single time, have a fresh tip every single time. You know, you have very, very little uh, residue left over, whatever else, you know, or, or waste left over. It's, it's those kind of things that we really need to explore further and, you know, and, and really put at the focus of everything that we do. So be innovative, be innovative in sustainability mm -hmm. and, and bring to the consumer the solutions that they might not even think about themselves yet. Yeah. but that they really would like to have, particularly given the current scenario that, that we're seeing in the current environment. Absolutely. Wow. And so sustainability, really, clearly very important to you. And, um, and we, you touched a bit about maintaining that throughout the pandemic and that resilient yeah. attitude. Um, could you just go a bit more yourself and as a company, how did you not lose sight of that? Um, oh, you mean of the sustainability or just in general how to navigate through through the current current storm? Let's go for both. 
Thanks, Amy. Okay. <laughs> gladly, <laughs> gladly. I mean, uh, let, let me just give you a little bit of, you know, of uh, home story, so to speak, of, of uh, what happened here in Germany when, when basically in March, when we were, when the lockdown became, became imminent, you know, and it was, well, okay, we are going to lock down everything and, uh, and you're not allowed to, to leave your homes anymore, et cetera, et cetera. We very, very quickly here put in place a contingency plan at, at Faber Castell because obviously, obviously we're manufacturers, so we have production. Yeah. And you can't leave people at home and say, well, we're just not producing anymore. So we sent everybody into home office and we created, you know, home office, uh, home office situation for everybody that we could, you know, was in the office environment and everything. And that was, was quite amazing to me because it was uh, great how quickly and how adaptable and how agile people were in that. Mm-hmm. And we did not lose any efficiencies or anything like that. It was, was really great to see. I mean, I was working from the basement at home, which was a bit strange, I have to admit. <laughs> but, uh, but all in all... It was, it was just very, very good to see that the team, you know, was really pulling together in, in this time of, of rather distress across the whole, whole nation and the whole world. And as far as our production was concerned, you know, we made sure that we kept all the rules, you know, that we put in place the right social distancing, you know, that we put the shifts up in, in the right way and everything. Um, but we never lost sight of what we wanted to achieve in general. And what we did um, prior to the pandemic, I started my job in November of last year here, and uh, in, in January, basically, um, we said, we want to create a strategy. Mm-hmm. And we want to create a strategy that takes us into the year 2025 for right now, okay? And uh, our strategy is called Safe Beauty for the Planet. So it was a complete coincidence, you know, that then with, with Corona and everything happening, but, but uh, that, you know, but for us, safety and, uh, and sustainability paired with great product innovation were, were the things that are most true to our heart. And I'm very glad that we embarked upon this strategy because even throughout the lockdown, you know, we continued working on this. And it also gave people a sense of purpose, you know, something to look forward to, to look into the future and to help uh, translate that strategy then into the products that our customers and consumers want to see. That's really what, what you know, what drives us and what, uh, yeah, what helps us manage through, through uncertain times as we're currently experiencing. And that's something I'm keen to ask you about is about the future, because it still seems quite uncertain in so many ways. Um, what do you think, what do you forecast in terms of trends and what, what are you up to? Um, as in terms of trends, I mean, you know, I'm, I don't have a crystal ball, uh, but obviously, you know, we're doing a lot of research here as well. I think, you know, that, that the topic of sustainability is going to continue to be very, very strong on everybody's mind. It might currently have taken a little bit of a, you know, second, uh, second role or whatever else because of, of the pandemic and everything. Mm-hmm. But I think, you know, um, in general, so sustainability is going to continue to be a big topic. So we need to make sure that we have sustainable formulas, that we have sustainable packaging and packaging, I mean, you know, the actual pencil, mm-hmm. for example, that we have a wide portfolio of products and everything to service everybody's, everybody's needs and everybody's desires. Mm-hmm. I think the whole topic of how should I call it, gender fluidity, you know, uh, really a much, much broader scope. I mean, in the past, you know, uh, it was, okay, a young girl would put on makeup and, you know, that was about it. These things have changed completely, you know. I mean, you can be whoever you want to be and, you know, and we should be there as, as a supplier for the brands that want to service and that want to, to delight people with the products that are just right for them. So the topic of customization, for example, I think is going to be very important as well. Um, then, you know, um, yes, our world has become very digital. It's become extremely digital. And, you know, with, uh, particularly with, with people not being able to, to travel as much as they used to be able to, uh, they start living much and much, much more in, in a digital world and digital environment. And so therefore, you know, to really also make our products accessible from that standpoint and work closely with our customers. So, you know, whether it's sampling or whether it's, you know, um, product creation, for example, making that digital. Um, I think that's going to be a big step forward. And then, um, you know, also from a, from a price point, I mean, we all have to be cognizant of the fact that the world economy is not doing as well. Yeah. And um, we have to make sure that we can offer product in every price bracket. Mm-hmm. And um, that will require us to rethink of, of, uh, of what we need to do in order to be able to tackle that. Mm-hmm. And then I think another trend is going to be more local for local. Okay. You know, I mean, we've seen it. Um, We've seen it now with Corona. For how many you know months have the borders in some countries been closed now? For how long you know have we not been able to go over to the U.S. for example, or for you uh, you know for U.S. citizens to come over to Europe? Mm-hmm. Um, we luckily have a plant in the U.S., so we are producing there. 
but um, I think that it will become a big, big topic. And that's not just because, you know, uh, it adds more agility, but that's also due to the sustainability topic. And I think, you know, people would, will want to buy in the country where they're actually living because it will also foster the economies there and everything. And I think, therefore, you know, a local for local approach is going to be relatively important going forward. Um, on that note, I think I'm going to have to wrap everything up. We could talk All right. <laughs> it's, it's come to an end. Um, yeah, thank you. It was, it was really interesting. I could literally talk to you ages about it. <laughs> Thank you so much. Well, it's, it's been a true pleasure. Thank you so much. Yeah. And yeah, you know, happy to, happy to continue to, to make people look and feel beautiful because as you know, it's our nature and Father Castell Cosmetics. Thank you so much, Sarah. Thank you. Thanks. Um, and before you go, thank you so much for watching. And if you'd like any more exclusive interviews and insight like today with Dagma and Father Castell, um, head to cosmeticsbusiness.com or visit YouTube. Thank you. Bye.